So, Jared, you're actually a producer on this movie as well, so you came on board pretty early on. Um, how much input do you have into creating the character, and as an actor, how much do you enjoy being able to do that? Um, I love being able to do that. It's actually um, maybe my most favourite thing about what I do in this business is developing scripts, but I would be lying if I said that I had a, ch had a chance as an actor to develop my character, but this script, when I read it, was one of those scripts where I said, I could give you four notes on this whole script. There are scripts I read that I could give probably seven to 800 notes <laughs> on a script. This was so well written and so well perceived. The world he created, the characters, um, and, and the surprise within those characters, and the, the vulnerability and the power of them, that um, one of the things that I didn't have to work a lot on was, a lot on was developing the script. It was more about getting the movie made. <laughs> <laughs> and those um, scripts that you read where you have got hundreds of notes, have you ended up doing any of those, or are those ones that you just sort of push aside usually because it's too much? <laughs> some of them I've made, some of them I haven't. That's one of the fun things is, you know, ripping a script apart and, and, and putting it back together, and suddenly you see it starts to work. Mm -hmm. and, and suddenly you see it really starts to fly. They're the best moments. That's magic. Goosebumps. I always go, when you're having ideas in your script mm -hmm. meeting and you get a good idea and you get goosebumps, and that to me is the truth. You know, okay, that works. Um, and then some you try and you go, you know what, it's a piece of shit. What am I? I'm kidding myself <laughs> on you. <laughs> and you read the script pretty early on as well, yeah. and said that you were interested in the I movie. was yeah. trying to get to the point where I can identify and have goosebumps, what he's talking about. So it's like I was reading the best screenplays that were around, they have my agent try and get their hands on the best stuff. And then I'd put it up against things that I've read that I thought was cool to see if it had any of those elements in right. it. And I ran into Tucker at the time, the script was at Relativity, and I just mentioned it to him in passing at the Golden Globe party. And he remembered that because it was the first time we met. And when he came around full circle, I met with him again, and Tucker and this guy put it together, made the film happen. You know? um, and at one point in the movie, your character, Jared, says, um, you know, you're not the bad guys, we are. Could you talk a little bit about the kind of blurred lines, the kind of gray area that this movie is yeah. very interesting on? Yeah. It's one of the, 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 the great things about this movie is it's always kind of taking you by surprise. One, there's a lot of depth and complexity to these characters. So, you know, yeah, they're the cops. Ultimately, they're doing the good work. But they're not necessarily the good guys in the movie. You really see how they've been ravished by the world that they live in. Right. And the fact these are major crimes. When we deal with guys, by the time we come across them, we know who they are. And we're mm -hmm. not going to get anywhere by playing nice or necessarily by playing by the rules. We have to outmaneuver. We have to outshot. We have to outviolence at, at those guys. And that's who Big Nick is. He's kind of the best at that. But it has taken a massive impact on his life. He's not a particularly nice guy. He's loyal amongst his friends. But other than that, he's kind of a bit of a shocking character, and uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to play. These guys, in a lot of ways, have more honor, um, you know, in, in their kind of familial system than the than the cops have. But that's what we need to do to be effective, and we're brilliant at what we do. You know, it's a consistency from our perspective because we decided to live a certain way, and we just lived that way. When they have to do things that they're technically not supposed to do to combat it. Yeah. And, and just finally on, on this one, we've got um, Escape Plan 2 coming out at, at some point, right. and Angel Has Fallen. Can you tell us a little bit about um, those, just sort of wet our appetites for those two movies? I, I'm come. excited for that, to see what that, how Escape Plan 2 performs internationally, because it did so well. It did four times the amount that it done in America. Like, you know, like we did 25 million in box office here, and then 111, 112 million in China. Stallone is wow. still big, still huge internationally, you know, so it's cool to see what, like, how it does around the, you know, around the world. Um, and then, so for me, it, uh, with um, Angel Has Fallen, we have this a phenomenal director. I'm so excited that we got a hold of him. He just did this great movie with John Bernfall and Nikolai Waldo Costa mm -hmm. um, called um, Shot Caller. And, and this is not uh, another city falling. We were like, where, where are we going to go with this? But it's more like the, the Fugitive, where the world turns against my character. He's mm -hmm. set up for trying to take out the president and ends up going on the run. Mm -hmm. um, he's also not the more invincible Mike Banning that we know. He's, it, this is our Logan, essentially. Um, he goes on the run, and I have the good guys and the bad guys after me trying to get to the bottom of what the hell is going on. So it's this really kind of exciting, pounding, visceral... Um, chase movie. It's also super fun.
I'm looking forward to both of those. Yeah, mm -hmm. 50 Cent Joe Butler. Thanks very much. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.